Hey, welcome to another video. In this one, I'm carving a lily flower for my wife. My plan was to keep it relatively simple, but really carve in deep, giving it some unique depth and shape. My limited spoon gouge collection really tested me in this one. It was carved out of white pine and took around 10 hours to complete. I start the carving by roughly outlining the design and lowering the background to where I'd like it to be. Again, I wanted depth, so I carved in the background by a good inch or more. I left a little room because I plan on tapering in towards the design later in the carve. I really like doing this tapering technique. It creates great shadows and really makes the carving stand out from the background. After I roughly carved away the background, I started cleaning up the edge of the design and precisely carving along the perimeter as close to the lines as I can. I'm trying my best to stay vertical here, and I'm starting to be careful trying to prevent unwanted plunge cuts into the background. This I usually clean up towards the end of the carve, but it will take longer if I'm careless with my carving strokes. Next I began the shaping stage of the carve. I started by tapering the flower from front to back and hollowing out the inside. This became difficult the deeper I got because of my limited spoon gouge collection. I managed to make it work, but it was very tricky towards the end, carving the deep, tight spots in the center. I really made an emphasis on undercutting in this project as well, and spent much more time on it than I usually do. I feel it was worth the extra time spent and it really made the flower come to life.
I gave the background a carved texture which I really liked the look of and I use quite often. While carving this, I made sure to clean up around the design and carve away any plunge marks that were accidentally made while shaping the flower. The last thing I did to finish the carving off was carve a texture on the flower using a Dremel. I wanted it to be subtle and not dominate the flower. I used very light, long strokes in a curved motion that matches the look of real life lily flowers. I varied my pressure in areas giving it a natural appearance and I toned the texture down slightly by sanding it when finished. The staining process for me has always been frustrating and I've learned to cope with the reality that what is going to take the stain how it wants with no control on my part. I learned though through lots of trial and error that what works best for me is first applying a generous coat of natural stain. This allows the majority of the wood to absorb the natural stain first which doesn't change the color of the wood much. I then applied a coat of my stain of choice and wiped that off right away after finishing. The wood doesn't absorb the second coat as aggressively and the color looks much more consistent throughout. Thank you for watching. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.